All right, let's talk about gaining kinetic energy by falling. Gaining kinetic energy by falling. And really, this is not going to be like a big shocker as to how you get it. Up at the top, I'm going to say that I have, I'm going to choose a really nice number this time, 981. Guess why I have that. 981 joules of gravitational potential energy up at the top. Let's call it EG1. Now, this object is 10 meters up. And it has a mass of 10 kilograms. Nice round numbers. Actually, I didn't even have to tell you it was 10 kilograms. How could I figure out what the mass is without telling you? Let's pretend I never told you. EG is equal to mass times acceleration to gravity times delta dy. I could get m all by itself. m is equal to eg over, over yeah. And I can plug in my values and I can say, okay, well eg is 981 joules divided by 9, well 9.81 times 10, right? 9.81 meters per second squared times 10 meters that's 981 joules divided by 98.1 meters squared per second squared. And you end up getting 10 kilograms. OK, I didn't have, so I didn't have to tell you 10 kilograms. You could have figured it. In fact, I think that's a question from one of the early homework problems. You have to figure out what the mass of something is, given its gravitational potential energy or something like that. Okay, So very easy to do, very easy to do. But what we want to do is figure out how fast this object is going when it hits the ground. Oopsie. How fast. But you know, before I do that, I want to know what its kinetic energy is when it hits the ground. So we could call this a part A, and we can call this a part B. How can I figure out its kinetic energy when it hits the ground? Well, let's, tr let's try this energy total at the beginning is going to be equal to the total energy at the end. Total energy 1, total energy 2. Where this is position 1 and this is position 2. Now total energy to start with is going to be its EG plus, well I suppose it could have kinetic energy. And total energy at the end is going to be its EG plus, I suppose it, it uh, really does have kinetic energy this time. And then I can make the recognition that, OK, at the beginning, if it doesn't have any kinetic energy, that's going to 0. At the end, if it's hitting the ground at a height of 0, then that's going to be 0. And so I could say, all right, well, EG1, or EG initial, is equal to EK final. Energy is conserved. That's all we're saying. Energy got converted over to, to kinetic energy. And so we could say that the kinetic energy in this case, if we start off with 981 joules of gravitational potential energy, the final kinetic energy is going to be 981 joules. No problem. How can I find out the final speed, the how fast? What's a nice formula? Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do that. One half m v one squared, and we could say, hey, look, v one is equal to zero, and we could start figuring out. Well, the work that was done by gravity must be equal in magnitude to e g one. One half mv2 squared. You know, we could do that. We could figure out what this v2 value is. That might be a, a long way to write it. It would get us there. It certainly would get us there. How about if we just drew upon the original definition equation for ek? 
we say it's just one half mv squared. We don't have to go through this process of, of the work calculation. We can j just say quite simply, ek is one half mv squared. And I know that ek2 is going to be equal to 981 joules. I could say 981 joules is equal to one half times the mass was 10 kilograms times V, well it's really EK2 and it's V2 squared. And so now I can multiply both sides by 2 and I get 2 times 981 joules. Divide both sides by 10 kilograms and I divide by 10 kilograms. And I would be left with V2 squared but let's square root both sides and just be left with V2. Somebody who's quick on the calculator. 2 times 981 divided by 10, all square rooted. 14.007? Yes. Okay, 14.01. Let's leave it at, uh, at four digits. 14.01 meters per second. And really, we only ha ever had three sig figs here, so let's just leave it as 14.0 approximately meters per second. And you know, that's the speed. If somebody wanted to know, that answers the how fast problem. If somebody wanted to know what the velocity is, you'd have to know the context of the problem. And in the context of this problem, what's the direction? Down. So we've got to know our story, right? The story is this thing's falling. So if somebody said find how fast or find the speed, 14 meters per second. Somebody said find the velocity, 14 meters per second down. Okay?